Hey guys. Let's see what we got here. There you go. So that's nowhere uh, tutorial to kind of teach you how it works. Uh, this is the acoustic version. It's not the electric version because uh, there's a lot of guitars. Um, but if you want to be at home and play acoustic, this is a 12 string, so it's a lot of strings. But uh, it's the same thing with an acoustic. So <clears throat> to make an arrangement, an acoustic arrangement of a big song that has drums and everything, you want to make something that sounds full. Now, the one thing that sounds full with guitar is open string. So as often as you can, incorporate some open strings into your, uh, your chords. Because if I was just to play this... Which are the regular chords, it doesn't sound as full as this. So that's kind of the ideal. Um, the main chords are C sharp minor, A major, uh, E, and uh, G sharp minor. That's pretty much it. And there's a few B's in there. So these chords can very well use your open B string, your open E string. So your C sharp minor, instead of doing something very standard like this, you're gonna do this. So one, two, three, fourth fret, third finger. Second, um, I mean fifth string, then and this one under it, and the 
to here open. So, right? So that's your C sharp minor. And then for the A, instead of just doing a simple A, you can either do an A sus2, or you open the B string, or you can just even stay here with these two fingers that you have from the, from the previous chord, right? And you just do that. Sounds very nice. And then your E. So that's your verse, right? Cool. No cable. Absolutely no cable because we're in E. There's a lot of songs that I do with East of Eli, which are in B flat and things like this. That's when we use a cable acoustically. Uh, this one, you don't need it. So, and then the picking is um, kind of depends. For the first couple of times, I leave the the first string alone, I kind of do this. So again. Right? And that's the same as uh, what I recorded with the electric, actually. And then, like the third time, you can incorporate this, the first string. Pick as well. Right, still the same chords here. Right? I love all the likes, by the way. Thank you so much. This is cool. I'm glad that hopefully that helps you guys. Feel free to uh, post some videos of you guys playing it. And then uh, the chorus, so same concept, right? Uh, the G sharp minor. I'm just gonna do this, right, with the, these two open as well, so, then you go to your A sus2 here, you don't use these two fingers, you can use these two because you're already here, so you only have to slide these two, that's much simpler, right, and then you can slide the pinky back here for your C sharp minor, and then you're back here. So this finger just kind of stays here, and that is particularly useful when you sing while you play, in order not to look at your guitar, if you have like a pivot, like in basketball, you kind of have a foot that just stays in the same place, uh, you have a finger that stays in the same place, so here your pinky is kind of your pivot, because it goes tick, second fret, back to the fourth fret, so... With the open string, the cool thing too is you don't have to think about your hand much. You can just kind of str strum away as long as you mute your A string when you're playing it. When you play the G sharp, you kind of want to mute it from maybe from this finger, it kind of lay on the A string. Second half is E to A. Then you can go to the power chord of E at the seventh fret. So back to the second and then for the choruses towards the end um, you want to work dynamics right so you have dynamics in normal songs you want to add dynamics when you play guitar so I added something which is not on the record uh, when I play acoustic which is that kind of thing that does so let's analyze this you get your power chord here then I just do uh, octaves on the F sharp so ninth fret with the open strings always, and 11th fret. And then I go back to the 6th fret with your B over here, so, and all upbeat, right? So it's a cool thing to do the second time around. Right? And then, um, towards the end, I will also incorporate um, a pulse with the hand for the rhythm when they go um, towards this section. The cool thing is this pulse, right? So you can incorporate it when you play. So you're strumming, right? And you want to incorporate the pulse on two and four. So.
So that is kind of how you um, amplify a, a song uh, just on the acoustic. So yeah, what do you guys think? Let me read you guys now. Why did I learn right and not left? Because I'm a lefty, it's true, I'm a lefty, but my guitar teacher made uh, the right thing and he handed me a guitar like this. So I took it and for me it just made sense to have my left hand on the neck for the difficult stuff. So that's kind of why, it was just natural, I didn't really think about it. And you should learn how to play guitar, guitar is awesome. Look at this, isn't this beautiful? Everybody should play guitar. And by the way, Nathan is a lefty as well, and he plays righty, and there's a lot of guitar players. If you, if you um, dig a little bit deeper, I can't remember off the top of my head, but there's quite a few. Can't put like that. Do I have multiple guitars? Yes, I do. I have a few, it's a disease. It's a disease. I don't have as many as a lot of other cats, I have about 15, but uh, that includes mandolin and oud and uh, acoustics and everything. Yes, Liverpool was amazing. It was great. It was historical with a brick and everything. Still can't believe it. You have six guitars. That's good. Do you need a 12 string? Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, it's a regrettable beautiful mistake that I took this on the road because it's so hard to play 12 strings have a big sound right it's almost like adding a natural chorus because it sounds like there's a chorus to these strings but they are not made for heavy like harder stuff besides your first position things right and I'm doing like I did in, in Liverpool I did a version of Blackbird on the 12 string that's just not what it's intended for And um, it's just really difficult. Like when I jammed a couple nights ago, you know, we play solo and try to play solo with a 12 string. What happens on a 12 string is that every string is doubled, right? So when you press, you press two strings at the same time. So it makes it very, very hard to do that kind of stuff. So it's quite difficult. Uh, but then my favorite guitar player of all time, Stevie Ray Vaughan, he played uh, Life by the Drop, for example, on the 12 and, uh, and other things. And it's just, it, it, he's a monster. He's got monster fingers. And uh, that's why I say it's a beautiful mistake because I don't allow myself to complain. It's just, it's beautiful. But you can do this on, the, on a six string, on any regular um, guitar, absolutely. What else you get? Berlin. You know what? I've never been to Berlin. Never been to Rome either. So, looking forward to it. How do you figure out what course to play in a song? It comes with the ear. It's ear training. Um, I can, you know, I have, I have a pretty good ear. Um, it comes from regular exercises, you know, having even a little keyboard on your phone. You hear a bell, you hear... Uh, the breaks of a train, you hear a melody, you hear a bird, and you're like, hmm, what is this note? And then you try, you try to work intervals, right? So that's a third, major third, that's a fifth, that's a minor six, that type of thing, that's a seventh. Um, and you kind of try, try to make ear training exercises, and then you listen to a song, and all of a sudden it's just beautiful. It's not just beautiful so sounds, it's melodies and it's chords and it's you can identify things that's how you get you go about it so what time is it guys i don't have my clock someone tells me what time it is i need to meet with my cousin thank you 331 <laughs> perfect um Tutorial, everything, it's good. I encourage you to have a guitar teacher. Um, I did, I, I started at nine years old, so it's been over 20 years I play guitar and I it, it went fast. I, I was 
playing well pretty fast. So been doing this a long time. I just turned 30, right? Um, but um, yeah, starting with a teacher, you know, and you have to practice every day. It's just like languages. I love languages. There's only one secret to it. It's practice every single time you, uh, you can. Uh, the problem with that is that some people will think you're A, pretentious and B, showing off. And it's not the case. You're just trying to practice. Um, and the people that will say that you're showing off or uh, pretentious, they're too shy and maybe jealous um, because they see you work hard at it. You know, I speak Spanish and in LA, every time I see someone that possibly speaks Spanish, I take a risk and I order in Spanish. Hola, como estas? Si, yo quisiera el, el plato con, con el pollo y la ensalada y blah, blah, blah. And very rarely do I get a bad surprise. Most of the time it's a good surprise. And they're like, oh my God, you speak Spanish. I say, ¿cuánto tiempo que hablas español? Etc, etc, etc. And that's how you keep it fresh. Same with guitar. Start playing uh, the guitar 30 minutes a day. Minimum. It's not much. 30 minutes. It's not much. It's about probably a fifth of what you spend on social media. But play it every day. Every day, every day, every day. It's like working out. It's like everything. <laughs> French is so hard. Uh, le français, c'est assez dur, ouais. It's pretty hard. Uh, depends where you're from. Um, I was born and raised French, so uh, it kind of came easy, I guess. Paris, we're so excited. So stoked. Um, Kyler has a special place in her heart for France and Paris, so um, it's going to be special. Um, buy tickets, there's still a few left. Please, buy tickets. More tutorials next time. Next time. You'll have to tell me what you need, what you want to learn. Uh, there's a few ones that are tricky. For example, uh, the Siege is piano, right? Um, and it plays with a capo. But uh, I'm going to do it in A because I don't have the capo here. But I've made an arrangement on guitar so that in case we have no piano player, I can play on guitar. <laughs> tutorial probably at some point for, of the siege um, the main thing with piano is there's a dang a dang a dang a dang a dang a dang right uh, which you need to emulate on guitar so I'll get into that later I'm not ready I didn't play right <laughs> love lit the sky oh my god yes that's a great song we wrote together about what a couple years ago uh, I'll do a tutorial with that I probably need the electric to do the melody right but there's an acoustic version for everything. Nashville, Tennessee. I love Nashville. I do. We might have to uh, country it up a little bit. And Nathan has a twang, so Nashville, it'll happen. Brasil, eu amo Brasil. Gosto muito do Brasil. Estava lá. Faz pff, quase 10 anos para praticar o português, uh, que eu falo é horrível agora, mas uh, preciso praticar. Pratica comigo, por favor. Mas vamos ver. That was Portuguese, whatever. <laughs> ah, obrigado. How many languages? Uh... I am learning on my seventh. Uh, Italian was my sixth. I spent only one week in Italy, uh, all in all, but with French, Spanish, and Portuguese, it came pretty easy. Parlo italiano, ma è un. Eh, imparo, imparo, sì. Ma in Roma, devo parlare, sì. Uh, and my seventh is Arabic, actually. And Arabic is beautiful. Beautiful, it really is. If you analyze the construction of the language and how it's built and what's behind it, it explains so much about a society. Languages explain so much about a society, the way they use the verb to be or the verb to have. It influences everything um, in a culture, you know, the sense of self, etc. etc. That's why I learn languages, just like music, it opens doors. It's amazing. Arabic. <laughs> 
<laughs> How about Hebrew? Next. Hebrew, next. Because Arabic is close-ish. Um, just obviously different alphabet, but um, very close. Keller and Nathan, yeah, they're, they're, they're somewhere in Paris right now. Svenska, no. No. Dutch, I can understand. With German and French, I can understand um, in context and everything. Um, it would it would take me a while to uh, to start improvising with it. That's the key with the language, is um, to learn enough to start being able to improvise and say what you want to say. So to do that, you need to learn verbs. A handful, maybe a hundred words. With a hundred words and a small knowledge of how verbs work, um, and a little bit of vocabulary, which honestly, if you put your mind to it in a matter of, of weeks, you can do that. You can start being able to at least make people go, hey, not bad. How long you been here? Five days. What? So, yeah. I should write a book about this at some point. Spanish, Arabic, English, Hebrew. That's really good. Bravo. What other EOE songs did I help write? Um, I helped write, uh, co-wrote all the first EP, uh, Love Lit the Sky and all that. And then uh, the more modern produced stuff is um, is not my field of expertise. Uh, I love blues, I love rootsy, organic stuff. So Nathan wanted to take a, a route that was a little more electro, a little more pop. And I was like, hey, absolutely go for it. He found Jordan Wright, who is unbelievable. And they wrote these songs together and they brought me in to, to do the guitar work. So almost all the, all the guitar work uh, in the, um, the new songs are, is mine. There was also uh, some by Excel, etc. There's a few songs I did not record on, like Glow, uh, but really very few. So um, it, it was a, an amazing collaboration, you know, where um, everybody brings uh, his or her expertise. Picture with me. So yeah, meet and greets. Uh, they're for Kyler and Nathan. Um, because just backstage, I got a lot of stuff to take care of to keep uh, the show going. But I'll, I always try to do my best um, to, to show my face a couple times. Uh, je crois que je devrais faire ça un peu plus à Paris uh, qu'à d'autres endroits. Je le ferai, vous inquiétez pas. I can't wait for lavender milk. I swear to God. That'll... Pff, you have no idea. I used to spend my summers in the south of France with my cousins, uh, quite a few of them, and it looked like the movie A Good Year. It was really close uh, to that location, actually, and uh, it haunts, haunts, haunts my dreams. Uh, I really want to come back at some point. Mm -hmm. À Istres, exactement. So, it was Istres, yes, and uh, one of my absolute best friends is from Monaco, so I just have a big big love for the south of france to me it's the best place to live uh in the world if you take everything in context you know security culture food uh raising children etc etc i think it's the best place to live on earth maybe with california and california obviously has a better music scene so barcelona me encantaría volver me encanta esta ciudad un día y argentina bucket list Buenos Aires, ojalá un día también. Melbourne, love Melbourne. Actually, I love Tasmania. Best part of Australia, in my opinion, like mind-blowing, Tasmania. If you're ever there, just go to Melbourne, take a, what is it, 45-minute flight to Hobart, go there. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. Yes. See? I mean, it's... Amazing. The nature, the proximity to the South Pole, the pure air, the pure water. It's really incredible. Oh, uh, the lyrics to Glow. I don't even know them. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a Jordan and Nathan question. I'm horrible with lyrics. I think it comes from the fact that uh, I started learning English when I was maybe 12. Before that, I didn't even speak a word. So... But I, I learned music before that, so music was always about the chords and, and the melodies and everything, more than lyrics. 
So my love for lyrics came much later, but it's still not my first instinct to go after lyrics for some reason. It might be more the case with foreigners um, than obviously English speaking people. Jordan was sleeping at the Eiffel Tower? I'm not, I'm not surprised. We are beat up. <laughs> Istanbul or Athens, they're beautiful. I love it over there. Tel Aviv, I am coming to Tel Aviv. But with another artist. Um, what are the dates? I can't remember. It's later this month. Around the 17th or something. Look him up. His name is Engelbert Humperdinck. Complicated name. He's an old, old school uh, legend. He sold over 150 million albums. He's a big time guy. And um, they love him in Israel. They love him all over the world. I've traveled and toured with him for many years now, and uh, we'll be in Israel. Bring three shows. Look him up. Come to the show. Let me know you are. My photos. It's just a phone. It's just a phone. I've got a an SE uh, that I use mainly. This is I'm streaming through uh, my Seven Plus, and um, just uh, you know, good eye, framing, lighting. Um, and a phone. That's it. I can't carry a heavy camera. I have too much stuff to carry. I'm carrying two guitars, a pedal board, and stuff for like two months uh, to live, and it's gonna be under 50 pounds, so gotta travel light. Planos de vir ao Brasil. Sim, sim. Planos não são um, feitos ainda, mas uh, é, é a ideia. Eu acho é possível. Pode ser uh, o ano próximo. Esse ano, acho que não, mas you never know. All right, guys. It's time for a late lunch, I think. I hope that you enjoyed this. Uh, let me know you have, and um, if if you did, I'll I'll do more tutorials and uh, maybe less talking. Although you were asking me a lot of questions, so maybe more talking. We'll see. But thank you very much. Et les Parisiens, les Français, à demain. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, there's still some tickets left. Really. Make it happen. Let's sell this show out, all right? Cheers, guys. <laughs>